I'm going to read a verse from John chapter 5 verse 14. It's talking about a healing of a man and Jesus afterwards found him in the temple. So this man got healed and he kind of went his way. Jesus finds him in the temple, comes to him and says, see you've been made well. Sin no more lest worst thing come upon you. In the Bible throughout the scriptures we see this concept where people get healed and sometimes they lose their healing. We see a person who received an inheritance from his father and lost his inheritance. We see also in the scripture of anointing upon the person's life like Samson but because of certain behavior the anointing was lost. We also see in the scripture where the sheep was lost, the coin was lost and also we see where a son was lost. It is possible to gain something and lose it. We see this in statistics today. We see that in marriages. We see that in businesses. We see that in different places where people were booming and next thing that happens because they were not careful they lost it. For example the blockbuster, the, the DVD place they were renting out movies. You know they were cranking up very high prices and at one particular time Netflix, most of you you know what I'm talking about, Netflix came to Blockbuster and said we want to sell our small little business which sends movies to people and puts movies online into you for some million, one or two million dollars and Blockbusters laughed at them and says you guys are a joke, this won't happen. Less than five years Blockbuster is going out of business and Netflix is three billion dollar company. This shows to us in their generation it's easy to get something but it's a lot harder to be wise to maintain it. Can somebody say amen? amen. If you are having mental notes or if you can take notes I'm just gonna give it four simple steps of how to maintain your miracle, how to maintain your blessing. One is we train our mind. We train our mind. Where the mind goes man follows. The biggest lie people have about their mind is this. I can't control my thoughts. If you cannot control your thoughts then God is not sensitive when he tells us think on these things. Bible commands us to think on these things. If you cannot think God cannot tell you to do so. The fact God tells us to focus and to think that means no matter how hard it is you are responsible for what is going on inside of this box train your thoughts. After your freedom symptoms sometimes can come back. Similar situation will be presented again and nightmare could still come back. In that moment you have the biggest battle in your mind. Are you gonna believe what you feel, what you see, what's going on around you or are you gonna believe what you believed when God touched you? Are you going to dig up in doubt what you planted in faith? Are you going to begin to question in the dark what God has made very clear in the light? Train your thoughts. Means once you make a decision, my Redeemer lives, He lives when you feel good and He lives when you don't feel good. Can somebody say amen? So we train our thoughts. We train our mind. You make a decision today. When I receive the touch with the anointing water, I change my mind. God can heal you. But if afterwards you still think like the old person, you can lose that touch and the grace of God and go back to the old lifestyle and say things like, I've been there, I've been there, I know, I've always known. Like Pastor used an example of one young lady who comes to every prayer for something that she has a sickness of and after she doesn't get healed, this is what she says, I knew it. If your I knew it doesn't change today, God cannot work through you. We train, train our mind. Number two is that we have to close the door to sin. Close the door to sin. That means that if you want God bless your marriage and you're sleeping with and you're living with your boyfriend, you gotta stop that. It means you gotta go get married. God cannot remove the nightmares and the man coming and sleeping with you in the dream as long as you're committing sin. Sin is an open door to the devil. When for example if you're you know keep uh, having witchcraft or objects in your family and you're trying to bless your kids with their sleep by putting sleep uh, the dream catchers in your bed that is going to bring the devil into your home. If you came with cigarettes today we have a garbage can just for that purpose outside. If you know alcohol and those things that we begin to be addicted we have to understand after we receive prayer we have to do the part of cleaning up our life before God. Jesus said clearly and plainly if you sin after that he says worse not the same worse will happen. It's almost as better not to get healed in the first place if you're not gonna plan to live a holy life before God. 
I remember a story of young light, a young lady that we were praying for here at the church and during prayer she vomited a lot of blood, a lot of substances. She had this uncontrollable crying where she would cry and cry and cry and cry. She stopped going to work at that time. We prayed for deliverance. She felt so much better. She went back home. Everything was fine. The next morning everything started again. She phoned the church and she said, could you guys come and pray for us? She was one of our, one of our members here as we went to pray for her. And literally, we, we, me and Ilya walked and Martin into the house and she's in the bathroom puking and vomiting. She can't even let us pray for her because she's crying uncontrollably and vomiting. So we start looking around the house and I said, is there anything you have in your house that is not of God? And so any witchcraft things and she said well not really there's a little icon that my ex-boyfriend brought from Mexico some kind of a lady prayed for him and and there's this little sticker that I hang under my door as we were about to walk out of the door we saw this sticker and I don't read Spanish but I do know word demonio demonio how do you say that for demon I know that word how that word is written and so as I walked out and I saw this little sign on the door and it had that word and a few other things turns out that it was some kind of a charming prayer to keep the house away from the devils and you I don't know the way sense it this this is not right and I said is it okay if we remove this she said it's fine I saw it on my own eyes as I threw that with that object in the bathroom her face started to change and she stopped crying and never cried again remove sin out of your life you have to remove sin out of your life when you leave today for those of you who've been stealing you have to stop stealing return the stealing things back and so God can bless you this is very practical aspect of our maintaining our blessing in Jesus name the third thing is that we have to change our surrounding that means you can no longer have those people who bring you down to be around your life the Bible says evil company corrupts good habits meaning anything you receive good from God the people you have around you can corrupt it if you don't change those people we believe in reaching out to our friends but if you go to your friends for the sake of encouragement to yourself and they are only doing is bringing up beer and bringing up cursing and bringing up sin that will bring you down you gotta change your friends some people need to be completely removed from our snapchat from our text messages and some people they need to have a restraining order from us so that we can live a life where we are focused on the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ can somebody say amen, amen. and lastly is that we have to establish a living relationship with Jesus Christ a relationship with God is not the same as a religion relationship with God is not the same as going to church on Sunday once a week it's where it starts but it's not where it ends we encourage every person to spend time in prayer and the Bible every single day if you are in Trace Cities the church doors are open every day here from five o'clock and they're open actually throughout the whole day but from five in the morning prayer is offered here starting tomorrow till Wednesday because we have a miracle catch on Wednesday where we invite our friends and family members once a month to this special service where we're gonna have baptism and food and big awesome outreach Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday prayer here will be from 6 to 7. Everyone is highly encouraged and welcomed and also admonished to come and pray for revival and pray to establish your relationship with God. If you are working at 9 o'clock there is no reason under this blessed America you have no opportunity to come and pray. You can come and pray, bring your Bible and spend time with God. When you establish your relationship with God, you are allowing Holy Spirit to grow what you have and make it more. Anything you obtain from God must be maintained. Anything you maintain will multiply. I've shared a story once about a football player, Shaquille O'Neal. The moment he got signed with a, uh, uh, with a basketball association and he received his uh, million dollars upon his contract. He took that million dollars and he went and he spent that million dollars in 30 minutes. When his financial advisor heard that he had such a crazy gift upon his life, not only to play basketball but also to spend money fast, he phoned him and he gave him the following statistic and he told him, he said, did you know that Mike Tyson made 30 million dollars but he said he went bankrupt in 2003. 
he said did you know that another box so he made 250 million dollars and he said his house was foreclosed in 2008 he said did you know that 27 of NFL players go broke after two and four years of being retired and 60 percent after five years he said you my friend has just proven to be a part of that statistic unless you change something he sat down he started talking sense into him and he said you're gonna be really wealthy and at the same time you're gonna be really broke at this particular time Shaquille O'Neal he quit his college he quit his schooling because he became famous he became a good player because of this conversation with his mentor he decides to go back to school he would play basketball everybody would see him and this big guy would go back to college he finished his associates he finished his bachelor's he finished his master's and he finished his PhD while playing basketball and today every single week he no longer play basketball except he makes 400 something thousand dollars every week though he doesn't play basketball he's a multi-millionaire has a lot of restaurants a lot of other companies that he maintains and this is what he said it's not how much you make but how much you are educated to maintain the principle from this my friends it's not what God gives us today that really matters it's how much we are prepared to maintain once we receive that you can receive not even full deliverance but work with that and turn it into a complete deliverance or you can receive something little and take like that man dig it into the ground never work with it and then God will come to you and you say God well you gave me so little and God say you lazy wicked servant let's not be like those people let's take whatever God gives us from his hands and work with it and make it more so we can bring the glory to God and good into our life. Can somebody say amen?